now the rest of the show is going to be Xbox closing all of the. We talked about that. Already we talked week, about right? it. Yes. Yeah. We talked about uh, last week. Microsoft closed down like four Bethesda studios, chief among them, uh, Tango Gameworks, developer of the critically acclaimed Hi-Fi Rush, um, also games like Ghostwire Tokyo, uh, The Evil Within, their only Japanese studio, apparently, uh, and also Arcane Austin, developers of Redfall, but also uh, the critically acclaimed game Prey, and they also did a lot of work on the Dishonored franchise with Arcane Leon, the main studio. Uh, so it wasn't a good, wasn't a good time. Um, since then, a lot more news has come out, uh, about like what exactly like is going on, like how it gets much sadder from here and no questions answered, None. more questions yes. arise. Yeah. Uh, what, what do I want to, which article should I start with first? You, Cause you there's, there's like bits like and pieces of it. Well, I guess I'll start with. Uh, Microsoft says it needs games like Hi-Fi Rush yeah. after closing down the studio that made Hi-Fi Rush. Yeah, that blew my mind. Yeah. Uh, one day after Microsoft announced it would shut down four of its game studios, Matt Booty, the head of Xbox Game Studios, I'm not laughing at your name this time. I'm not happy with you. I held the town hall to discuss the division's future goals. We need smaller games that give us prestige and awards, uh, Booty told employees, according to internal remarks shared with The Verge. For some listeners on the call, it was a surprising goal. Microsoft had just shut down Japanese developer Tango Gameworks, which was coming off a small, prestigious hit like Hi-Fi Rush. So yeah, that's like that's, yeah, and, and trying to make a sequel. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, that's I'll, I'll go right to the next article. Well, well hold on. Uh, there's a lot that was going on on Twitter around this time. Yeah, people were really not happy with Xbox. There was some uh, talk about whether or not Hi-Fi Rush counts as a smaller game, which I think is ridiculous to even have that conversation. I think, I think part of what was brought up was because like it it took four years to make. Five, I think. Four or five Four years. Four or five years, yeah. And therefore, like, it probably costs, like, a, like several million dollars yeah. to make. Like, it's not an insignificant, um, and not an insignificant amount of time or money to make that game. Right. But I think, you know... The game's $30. The game's $30. It, it's, it's clearly not, like, Halo. It's not Gears. Yeah. It's not Forza. It's not Fable, even. Yeah, and they know? knew that, and that's why they sold it at $30. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. that's still a smaller game yeah. compared to all those other ones. Yeah. You know, I, I would count count that as a small game. Ghostwire what, Tokyo would be a big game. Yeah. When I hear, and that's even not that big. Right. I think it's only like six hours long. Yeah. But it's a seventy dollars game. Seventy dollars game. When and you know, out. it was multi platform because it also yeah. came on a PlayStation. So when I hear smaller game, I mm -hmm. think less than fifty dollars. Yeah. You know, if it's more than fifty dollars, it's a big game. Yeah. Uh, that's my take on. It. And then also, yeah, they were making a sequel, apparently. They yeah, well, not only... So, where is it? Uh, do, 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 do. Tango Gameworks... Wait, no, hold on. Uh, Tango Gameworks was in the process of pitching a Hi-Fi Rush sequel and wanted to hire additional staff before its sudden closure. Uh, the report, which sheds additional light on the closure of Tango and Arcane Austin, claims that Xbox leadership felt that the overall studio system was spread too thin, with Xbox president Matt Booty reportedly liking it to peanut butter on bread. While, uh, while little was revealed about the proposed sequel, Tango Gameworks was reportedly seeking to hire additional staff despite the departure of Shinji Mikami in 2023. Xbox previously called Hi-Fi Rush a breakout hit, uh, and our players are, uh, breakout hit for us and our players in key measurements and expectations. Tango wasn't the only studio considering a new game. Arcane Austin apparently wanted to return to its roots with a new single-player immersive sim. Um, Arcane Austin was famous for its work on Prey, which became a cult hit after a difficult launch in 2017. In a follow-up tweet, reporter Jason, Jason Schreier clarified that both projects were still in the pitching phase and thus considered to be years away. But still, they were, like, about to pitch brand new games yeah. that, like, could have, like, saved the ship. And instead, Microsoft was like, okay, close. Yeah, I, was, I said this last week. I think that uh, they lost some of their big players over at Tango. And uh, they were... They finished a game. Right. They were on their way to start a new project. And Microsoft just saw that as an opportunity to get rid of them completely. Yeah. Which isn't the right move. No, but, not but, at all. Uh, that's just the way that they saw yeah. it. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense because every 
anything that I've heard after. Like, I, I expected Microsoft or somebody at Microsoft to come out and give us a reason. Yeah. You know, like, uh, like maybe more people, may, maybe more people left Tango than we were thinking about. Yeah. And they weren't going to work on the next game. So they needed to find a place for the, for the company to go. And yeah. they're all in Japan. So it was, it would have been hard for them to relocate. They're like, that makes sense. But instead, they're saying the opposite. They're saying, we need games like Hi-Fi Rush. I don't know why we close them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's not making any sense. Matt Booty uh, released an internal memo uh, to Xbox Studios saying, the changes are, are grounded in prioritizing high-impact titles and further investing in Bethesda's portfolio of blockbuster games. Uh, before noting that Xbox is doubling down on Bethesda franchises that are best positioned for success. Didn't he literally just say they need smaller titles? Yes. So on <laughs> one on the one hand, you're saying you need the big high impact yeah. titles. That would imply Fallout and Elder Scrolls and Doom and Wolfenstein, like those games. And then the next and Dishonored. Day, and, yeah. And the next day saying like, you know, uh, we need more games like Hi-Fi Rush. You know, like you can't have... Both no correction. You should be able to have both because that's yeah. the that's the sign of a healthy video game company. You know, you have like your one big title that you make all your money from, and you use that to fund all the little titles that don't necessarily need to make a profit, but like are fun and quirky and like have audiences around the yeah, world. Yeah, and and uh, you make a lot of small titles because every once in a while, one of those small titles makes millions and millions of dollars. Yeah, to break out hit, and it didn't cost you much. Yeah. to do that. It's a gamble, but yeah. if you gamble enough, you'll win eventually. That's my take. Go to Vegas. Spend all mm -hmm. your money. Um, there was a clip that was circulating on Twitter from the Double Fine documentary. Yes. Did you see that? Yes. I forgot what the documentary is called. Yeah. I forgot what game it was It was for, for Psychonauts 2. Okay, it was for yeah. Psychonauts 2. Uh, that was around the time they got acquired by Microsoft. Yeah. And they had a, a big roundtable meeting with everybody at the company. Mm -hmm. And was it Matt Booty? It was Matt Booty. He stands, Phil What's this? Phil, Phil Sha Schaefer. Tim Schaefer. Tim Schaefer. Tim Schaefer yeah. is standing right next to Matt Booty, and they're talking. They're addressing everybody, and everybody's mm -hmm. got concerns about them being being bought out by Microsoft. And they're very upset because Microsoft has a really big. Uh, what would you call it? Non disparate? No, you would call it like a non compete. Non -compete. Yeah. So you, if you anything that you work on that's game related is owned by Microsoft. Yeah. That means if you go home at night and work on your own game, if you publish that game, Microsoft owns that game. Mm -hmm. And the, as you can imagine, this studio that is run like an indie mm -hmm. band, uh, this studio is not happy that yeah. all of a sudden they can't work on their own little things, especially because that same week was Amnesia Fortnite, yeah. <laughs> the the game jam that they do every year. Yeah. So they were literally doing a game jam that Double Fine didn't take any ownership of your yeah. game. They're like, if, if a game here is a breakout hit, it's yours to do whatever you want with. Not after, after Microsoft joined. And, and yeah. in the documentary, you have the conversation with Matt Booty mm -hmm. saying, no, we own we own the game. And yeah. people are fucking pissed at yeah. him. And he's like, I'm sorry. That, that's just what it is. is. Like, he's trying to, like, double back and, like, try to, like. He's saying all of the wrong things. Yeah. And nothing's changed. Yeah. Uh, speaking of saying all the wrong things. That documentary is amazing. That is very good, yeah. Um, Sarah Bond, the president of Xbox. Uh, yeah, president of the Xbox brand, was recently on. Uh, the new president yeah right? yeah, yeah. Uh, was recently interviewed by Bloomberg uh, and was asked one of the Shuttered Studios in particular just created a hit game it did really well on Game Pass in terms of engagement and won a ton of awards shouldn't succeeding in that way ensure the future of the studio and she <laughs> that's a great question that's she a great way clearly, to phrase the question like, did not want to answer that question yeah. she didn't have an answer to the question and so she just like tried to tap dance around it as best she could one thing I really love about the games industry is it's a creative art form. It means that the situation and what success is for each game and each studio is really unique. There are no one size fits all for us. Doesn't help. That didn't answer anything. No, we look at each studio, we look at each studio, each game team, and we look at the whole variety of factors when we face with making decisions and trade-offs like that. 
but it comes back to our long-term commitment to the games we create, the devices we build, uh, the services we ensure we're uh, setting ourselves up to be able to deliver on those promises. Yeah, they didn't say anything. Exactly. Like, it, it literally nothing. Is she admitting defeat? She's not own. admitting anything. Like she literally said nothing. That's that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Say what you will about Phil Spencer, but he when Starfield did bad and people were were mad at him, he was like, "Yeah, we fucked up." No, that was Redfall. Oh, it was Redfall. That was when Redfall came out. Yeah. And the thing about that is, you know, they when all this when the the double fine uh, clip started circulating. Another clip started circulating from the Microsoft produced history of Xbox documentary that they made about when Lionhead Studios closed, the team that made Fable. They said, like, we acquired Lionhead this year. We closed them down 10 years later, and it was a failure for us. We looked at it like, why did it close? How can we ensure that it doesn't happen again? And it fucking happened <laughs> yeah. again. I just, I need a good answer from somebody here there to, is, that, that will make sense of it. Because it just doesn't make any goddamn sense. about this makes sense about it. Yeah. Like, like you said last week, Redfall didn't do very well. That, you know, if, like, if a game doesn't do well, the, the studio close makes sense. But you look at, like, everything else that Arcane Austin did. They worked on Prey, with critically acclaimed game. Eventually, it went on to sell really well. They were a support studio for Arcane Leon making the Dishonored games. That's a very popular series. So there was a reason for that studio to exist. They were working on a way to get back to what the games they know how to make and put out the games that they're famous for that could have worked with Microsoft's marketing muscle, but instead of even trying, Microsoft said, no, you're not getting a second chance. What I want to hear is that somebody at uh, Tango Gameworks and uh, Arcane, yeah. I want to hear that somebody was like, shitting on the desks and fucking throwing computers yeah. out the window and shit and they just had to get rid of them yeah. you know like i th that's what i want to hear right. i want to hear that they had to fire a million people at the company yeah because they were just impossible to work with yeah otherwise there's no good reason to just no. close a whole studio no. like this i mean it's the tango game works that makes that that baffles me the most because yeah. that game was successful yes well they say it was successful yeah. They say it was successful. They're mostly saying like a kid did really well on Game Pass. But I think people are starting to see that like I, Game Pass is not clearly not a good business model. They're yeah. not saying it is. They're not saying it's not a good business model. But like everything we're seeing now is like proving otherwise. The subscriptions have plateaued. You know, everybody who wants Game Pass has Game Pass. Anybody who doesn't want Game Pass doesn't have Game Pass. Well, well they gave us so much value in Game Pass. And then the value started to plateau and it started to lose value now right. because but now like they've backed themselves in the corner because they have to like keep adding value to it they have to they made the commitment all first party games are going to be in game pass day yeah. and date and then That's they a, took that away or they or they lied and everybody knows that that statement is a lie now well now part of the part of the whole downfall of this is they're having debates are they going to put call of duty in game pass day and date yeah because they own that now if you put Call of Duty in Game Pass, you're losing a lot of sales from Call of Duty because everyone's just going to go get it on Game Pass. But that's potentially a lot of people who might not have gotten Game Pass otherwise. But by the same time, if you don't put Call of Duty on Game Pass, that is a bigger walk back of all first party games yeah. day and date than what Starfield was. Yeah. So they're in a lose-lose situation here. I don't know, because at one point they had to have determined that having the Game Pass sale is worth more than a one-time $70 fee. You know, like, one time somebody paying $70 is worth less than trying to lock somebody into Game Pass for a year. It's like, you look at, like, Netflix and all the, the movie streaming yeah. services. When Netflix started, it was just library content. It was older films. And those, they would buy the rights to, relatively inexpensive, and put them on their servers. When they started, when all these companies started getting into trouble, is when they started producing their own content for these streaming services. You know, if Disney Plus was just library content, it would be profitable, but it can't be. It's got to produce The Mandalorian, a $100 million show. It's got to produce She-Hulk, a $200 million show. It's got to produce all these other, like, exclusive 
movies and TV shows just to keep up with the Joneses. And that's why all these streaming services are, are unprofitable. I think streaming services are unprofitable because they have to keep making more and more money every year and they keep spending more and more money on it. So it's yeah. going to have to balloon eventually. These companies have to eventually be comfortable with not being more profitable than the previous year. Right. Like YouTube does that. YouTube uh, was just, they just reinvested themselves over and over again. And now they're at a point where not, they can't get any more new subscribers. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, they're kind of cool with, I mean, they're not cool. They're trying to find other ways to make money, but still they're, they're more cool with plateauing than some of these other companies are. Cause I guess the other companies really yeah. have investors and stuff. And YouTube is just owned by Google and seems to just not really give a fuck. Yeah. But Microsoft, I would hope, is similar. Like Xbox is owned by Microsoft, which is already a huge company that's making money in a lot of other ways. So I'm hoping that they see the value in Xbox in different ways. One of the things I didn't put it in the keep, but like there was a quote circulating around that somebody who worked at Microsoft, who worked at Xbox said, it's no longer Xbox. It's no longer the Xbox division. It's Microsoft gaming. Yeah. Which I think says a lot because you like going back to the original xbox like it was a small team within microsoft who fought against what microsoft wanted to do with the system to make it a proper video game console and it was that team that like really shepherded what the xbox brand was all the way up even through the 360 era now that it's more integrated into like the greater microsoft conglomerate it has to start adhering to you know the microsoft way of doing things you know the Excel's and the Word document yeah. and the Edge browser and all that you know nonsense that doesn't really work for video games. Yeah. You know you have more you know tech business minded people as opposed to video game minded people running the show now. You know Phil Spencer could say anything he wants about how he's like running you know the ship over there, but he is more directly connected to Satya Nadella than the previous administrations had been. So it's being run by as a tech company rather than as a video game company. Yeah. Again, I don't mind their focus on Game Pass. It's just that uh, they, they, they seem to be... They, they bought up all of these game studios, mm -hmm. so they're trying to be more of a software company, which I think makes sense for Microsoft to, to want to do. But... They are losing the value of Game Pass. Like, like you're you're getting rid yeah. of these. You're you're buying studios to get rid of them. Uh, your whole business model is that uh, first party releases re release day one on your on on Game Pass, and then you're releasing them early if you pay more money. Yeah. Like that's not the same thing. That's a completely different thing. And now one of your biggest games might not go on Game Pass at all. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. There's so many ways for them to make a lot of money off of Call of Duty. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure they'll figure out how, how to... I'm sure they'll figure know. out how to fuck it up. And on top of all of this, the Perfect Dark development has been exceedingly rough. This is what I'm most interested in yeah. from Microsoft. I want to I wanna see this fucking Perfect Dark game. This is, it seems uh, like uh, they're, they're having trouble with it. This is according to Jeff Grubb. Because, of course, it is. Uh, the fallout from the layoffs and hearing more and more. I've heard uh, for years that Perfect Dark is in a rough state. It sounds like it's in a very rough state. And it doesn't sound like it's really coming together in any way since the game was announced in 2020. And even with Crystal Dynamics coming on board to help work on that. On top of what Gruff, uh, Grubb has said, Alex Donaldson of VG247 added that the game's development has been uh, pushing a boulder up a hill. I've heard... I have crazy stories about the development of that game. I have not put out in print out of respect uh, for the team really trying to push uh, that boulder up a steep hill, but my patience is getting pretty thin. Uh, he's got crazy <clears throat> stories about the development of Perfect Dark? Yeah. Jesus. I, from what I understand, uh, not the coalition, the initiative, that was the studio specifically made to make Perfect Dark. The guy running the initiative used to work at Crystal Dynamics, and apparently he he was not a good like developer over there. And like when things started to like fall apart, that that's when he recruited Crystal Dynamics to come and help him work on the game because he only has experience working on Chris, the Crystal Dynamics method of making games. Okay. But even still, like they haven't found a rhythm yet, and this game is just not coming together. 
That's sad. I mean, yeah. I mean, all we've seen is a teaser. Yeah. So we know nothing about this game. Yeah. And that was so long ago, too. Yeah. So they've been doing a lot with this game. Yeah. They're going to fucking close uh, Crystal yeah. Dynamics. <laughs> <laughs> well, Crystal Dynamics is owned by... It was owned by Embracer Group. I think they got sold. I hope they got sold. That's my, my one of my most anticipated games from, from Microsoft. Yeah. Uh, and uh, no, I guess we won't hear anything. When is Indiana Jones coming out? Allegedly this year. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, fucking. Uh, they're going to do their game. Sh- Xbox is going to have their game showcase in June, like around like E3 time, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. And I know that Phil Spencer is going to do an interview with uh, Ryan McCaffrey of IGN. And I've listened, I've listened to the podcast that he did like after the studio's closed and like, cause I, I've, I've listened to like IGN's Xbox podcast for like years and always he is like, you know, not to disparage him, but he has always been like the champion of that brand. You know, yeah. he did not sound like the champion of the brand anymore on the most recent podcast. So I would not be surprised if like he comes out with the hard hitting questions and I hope Phil has the nuts to be honest and say yeah. like, we're fucking up. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Yeah. You know, I thought one thing, clearly the industry is moving in another way. Yeah. I hope that they kind of uh, put him over the coals. And yeah. They, they ha- I mean, that's where Phil Spencer uh, did the whole Redfall, Redfall talk. He did it on uh, kind of Funny. Kind of Funny's yeah. podcast. Yeah. So uh, this is an opportunity for them to yeah. have some actual answers. Phil has been the head of Xbox for over 10 years now. He came in during the Xbox One era when like their things were really bad over there. And he did his best to try to turn the ship around and he said all the right things. But like now that we're in a whole new generation, like we're starting to see like nothing's really changed all that much. A big problem during the Xbox One era was like there were no games. And now like during this era, we have all these studios, but still no like games. Yeah. You know, like the games that are there, like, yeah, there's Starfield, there's Halo Infinite, there's, you know, the one Forza they did, you know, but like it's not enough. All these studios need to start making money. Yeah, for for them, or else they're gonna keep closing them. Mm-hmm. 